Hello and welcome to the Real Gary Tussie Podcast, where we talk about anything and everything that could ever amount to anything or everything to anybody and everybody who ever intends to amount to something. We'll be right back. Hello and welcome to this edition of the Real Gary Tussie Podcast. And like I do every time we open a podcast, I'm grateful for somebody who's contributing to um, the seeds that we sow and help us to be strong in accomplishing our goals in life. So I want to I want to send a, a shout out. Thank you to Jack Strike Cleaners who keep me a sharp dressed man, and I appreciate that so much. Once a week they come pick up uh, my it's mostly shirts. Sometimes I send pants, but mostly it's shirts, and uh, they do super heavy starts for me because that's how i like to roll and uh if you see me it doesn't matter what i'm doing as far as work i'm gonna wear a super heavy starched cotton shirt because it looks so good and you know um every girl's crazy about a sharp dress man don't tell miss julie i said that on the air she I, I i probably won't eat for a week now that i said that i'm just trying to make an interesting podcast um so i said that but um I'm sorry. Okay. But I do like dressing sharp and uh, Jack's dry cleaners helps me to do that. And um, I actually have a, um, I, I actually, when I put on a shirt in the morning, it is a ceremony. A lot of things I do in the morning are ceremony. I'm very like disciplined. Uh, it's aggravating to my loved one sometimes. And I try to give them plenty of space to really hate me uh, because I am so disciplined. But when I put this shirt on that came from jack's dry cleaner with extra starch and i put my arm in the shirt i have to push my arm until the 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 sleeve goes (laughs) both of my sleeves do that and that's like oh yeah we're ready for our day because we've got a super starch heavy starch shirt on and it's awesome so that's kind of like my superman cape i wear one of those every day every day every day thank you jack's dry cleaners on this podcast we're talking about the um uh super tornado outbreak of 1974 1974 a super outbreak was the second largest tornado outbreak on record for a single 24 hour period just behind the 2011 super outbreak it was also the most violent tornado outbreak ever recorded with 30 f4 and f5 tornadoes confirmed from april 3rd to april 4th 1974 there was 100 there were 148 tornadoes confirmed in 13 u.s states and the canadian province of ontario in the united states tornadoes struck illinois indiana michigan ohio kentucky tennessee alabama mississippi georgia north carolina virginia west virginia and new york the outbreak caused roughly 843 million uh dollars and uh that's a lot of money i mean i'm staggered by seeing that right there the damage has occurred in uh, that's what occurred in the u.s only the outbreak uh, extensively damaged approximately 900 square miles along a total combined path length get this of 2600 miles at one point as many as 15 uh separate tornadoes were on the ground simultaneously did you hear that at one point, 15 of these were on the ground simultaneously. In 1970, the 1974 super tornado outbreak was the first tornado outbreak in recorded history to, to produce more than 100 tornadoes in under a 24 hour period, a feat that was not repeated globally until, uh, 1981 in the United Kingdom tornado outbreak and in the United States in 2011. I was there in 1974 i saw it and you know what i forgot to repeat the number so i'm going to pause this because i can do that and then i'm going to give you the number and we're going to pick it right back up so this tornado outbreak was a uh made a mark in my mind and i told you on the last podcast and earlier in this live feed that uh, it got really 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 hot that day and it was uh, when i got home from school and it was on a wednesday 
when we got home from school my brother mark and i uh my sister was three years old she was already home it was hot and we even trying to play outside it was hot and it being hot that hot early in the year you know you don't think about it as you know spring's coming summer's coming but now we look back and we see all that a little a little differently um that uh, as i mentioned on the last podcast we actually witnessed one of the tornadoes within two miles of us mother and the children were home alone without dad that tornado is going is the largest tornado it's the first tornado i had ever seen personally and i have seen others since but i've never seen one larger than this and i've got pictures maybe on another we may do a production about this next year and actually show pictures and footage um this tornado and little did i know you know hindsight's 2020 because now i want to talk a little bit about what uh, we saw the next day but little did i know as that tornado was going across it was taking lives we were literally watching a tornado go by that was taking lives within two miles of us and there were people down in Pusey Ridge and the Cotton Cottonburg, and then it went. That tornado trekked along across over to Red House Road. And if, if you're familiar, and I know people are hearing this all over the globe and and uh, and all over the states, but I'm talking about what I saw. And um, I want to tell you now a little bit about some of the things we experienced. Now I told you how hot it was, and when that tornado hit, I want to tell you what happened after that tornado went through. There was power out massive there was no power in the entire county uh, for days we had no power whatsoever we had some batteries for am radio so we listened to am radio and that was the first time in my life you know these warnings you get that are test of the emergency broadcast system well this time it was real the emergency broadcast broadcast system kicked in and that is all that was playing on every am radio station after this tornado went through the rest of the day and into the evening was never the same Tor- the tornado ripped through and then there were tornado warnings of other smaller tornado outbreaks all over but something i had ne- something else i had never seen before was lightning was continual you could literally although there was a power out there were power outage and you couldn't see anything for the thickness uh, as the sun set and you got into nighttime although you couldn't see anything because all the power was out we uh the sky was lit up by a constant roll of lightning and it was a constant roll of lightning without even any thunder it was just it was very very eerie now i told you that uh, my father had built the first home in uh, the subdivision we were in and my uncle and my aunt my dad's sister and and, and her husband and my cousins built a house at the end of the other end of the subdivision we we didn't have a basement they did we went to their house house and this is where we were hearing all the am radio and hearing about the outbreak uh, the rest of the evening and scared out of our minds and so i don't remember sleeping at all that night but we must have but the lightning rolled and rolled and rolled the most part of the night i mean it, it was not like there's lightning here and then lightning over there the entire sky was like a roll ripples of waves of lightning i'd never seen anything like that and we're talking into the night now there are people who uh some of you listening to me now maybe you saw it too you know what i'm talking about and people who may hear this po- this uh later in the day because they're not up quite yet we do own the five o'clock hour <laughs> and i really appreciate like like roy weighing in and terry weighing in uh from texas they're an hour behind us so they're up an hour earlier than, than we are even doing this but good morning guys special place in my heart to for the early riser so all that night we're on we are actually hearing nothing but the emergency broadcast system on a battery powered am radio and we're watching the tour the the, the the lightning roll like ripples of waves constant all night long remember i told you how hot it was well the next morning and the the morning came early it seemed like we literally had to cook by had to build a fire i don't even think we were prepared with coleman heaters or anything uh the, the coleman burners we had to build fires and try to cook things and we did it we just cooked things on the 
uh on on uh gr- we didn't have grills sophisticated grills back then like we do now and we just somehow we got through it, but we were without power for days but i remember the next morning remember i told you how hot it was it was so hot when i got off the school bus that day on uh, april 3rd 1974 but the next day it was ice cold that morning and we um I had to wear coats and uh, the roads everywhere were impassable. People were having to get out with chainsaws and trucks and tractors. And uh, so I re- I remember we all got in our cars. I did, uh, our family did, and my uncle and aunt and our cousins. And we all went down toward uh, Pusey Ridge because we heard what had happened. And I'm not going to describe everything we saw. I will not do that. Um, but people lost their lives and the way they lost their lives and the way they were discovered is um i'm gonna tell you it changed how we deal with emergencies that tornado outbreak outbreak in 1974 but i want to tell you before we run out of a, out of time just a few things we saw that day uh, as we walked with our coats on the next day i mean it may have been in the 40s it was it went from 90 in a 24 in less than a 24 hour period down to 40 degrees it was it, it, it was just amazing. But we saw um, houses, one house, and people died in this one. One house was literally in whole, picked up off its foundation, dragged down a hollow, and then, I know affectionately everybody calls them a holler, but it's a hollow, <laughs> down the hollow, and then back up the hollow, and then halfway down another one. And people died in that and again i don't want to describe and i will not describe how they were discovered another uh thing we saw that really mar- let alone there were cars just blown uh, hundreds of feet away but something that really really marked me good morning Luana. special place in my heart for the early riser another thing i saw that really really marked me straw bales um st- uh, were, were burst open and straw was literally like a dart or an arrow shot i wish we had cameras back then to take the pictures of of what i saw I'll never forget it were shot straight through telephone poles i mean in one side and then out the other like i I never seen anything like this in my life and it wasn't just one or two it would take like a handful and just boom until where it nearly the straw itself nearly cut the the uh, the telephone pole in half and shot through like that and we um i feel like i'm gonna have to maybe continue this on the uh, on tomorrow because i saw so much and my father was um a builder at the time and he was also in partners with uh ad grant at the time and uh, had a wonderful partnership there for a, a, a while when we were kids and uh, there were uh, there's a gentleman uh, at the time in uh, cottonburg and uh, Pusey by the name of creighton whitaker and uh, after we saw his house he had a story and a half like a uh, um, craftsman style home story and a half and the two sides of that home it was about to explode the two sides went where it the home was about to explode and there were two of those identical type of uh floor plans i think we will talk more about this uh tomorrow uh began to explode well a dad and ad literally put those two homes back together so we're probably going to talk about it can you believe we're out of time you're listening to the Real Gary Tussie uh, podcast, and uh, we are encouraging you to enjoy life, live it, and let live. Per- have freedom and set others free, and uh, and pursue have apply a high energy pursuit to our happiness. Tussie out. <laughs>